Good morning. This is a horse that came in that's uh, a barrel racing horse. Uh, he's having trouble with the lameness in the left front leg. Um, we've already done our lameness exam. We pulled some blood to do some PRP therapy and then we sedated him. We've blocked the leg here. I shot some x-rays. We'll show you the x-rays. But he's got a uh, cyst on the navicular bone in this left front foot. So um, we're going to do some regenerative therapy. This horse will probably be out for about five, six months of competition, let this thing heal. If you want to come in, I'll show you the x-rays. So this is a horse that came in from Missouri, belongs to Miss Sydney Evans here, that's uh, had a, it's a barrel racing horse. It came up lame at a rodeo, and uh, she had it looked at, uh, treated, and then she's brought it down here for us to evaluate. We jogged him off, did her lameness evaluation. He's lame in the left front leg. Um, we narrowed it down to the foot area. So then we shot some x-rays, which we have here, the left front. He's, he's got some changes here in the left front coffin joint. Also a little spur on the navicular bone, a little cystic area here. And then here's a skyline view of this navicular bone. You can see this lesion right here. And this is the cortex of the navicular bone, the deep flexor tendon, which she will talk about here in a minute, runs under here. Here is the right foot for comparison. So you can see how nice this right front navicular bone looks compared to the left front here. So I'll have Miss Sydney tell you kind of the history of Romeo here. So we got him as a four-year-old, and he, when he turned five, he got really bad EPM, and he actually almost died. And we had to leave him off for a few months after that, and then he kind of just went into like a downhill spiral after that, and he's just been issue after issue, and then this comes up, so. Yeah, at, at the rodeo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty significant injury, and we're kind of limited uh, to what we can offer. Uh, a normal injection is probably not the right way to go, so we're going to pull some blood, which we've already done, um, spin it down and get the platelets, and we're going to do PRP on this and try to regenerate this lesion to heal it up. Um, put him on some anti-inflammatories, do some corrective shoeing, and pretty much stall rest for the next 30 days, limited turnout for the next three or four months, and then we'll reevaluate him from there. So when we pull the blood, we don't sedate the horse, we pull the blood, then we sedate him, uh, and then we block the foot to put the needle in, and so that's what we've got behind you there is him ready to put the therapy in, so we'll do that next. Let me set this up. So we x-ray and it's kind of a blind stick. So we x-ray that to make sure we're in the right spot here. And we are, so we're gonna put the therapy in there. Let me have it there, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so this is the PRP, that's the plasma rich proteins that we've got there. That's what we're gonna inject into this lesion. Okay, we're going to wrap this good, and we'll leave this wrap on to in the morning, okay? Okay. And we'll stall resting today. Mm -hmm. We'll give him a little anti-inflammatory, but I don't want to put him on antibiotics because we want all those platelets to do what they're supposed to do. So okay. what we found is when we do the PRP, when we draw the blood, we get a better harvest. The quality of the platelets are better if we do it prior to sedation. Okay. So that's the that's reason for going through that step. And then we sedate him, of course, because we're putting a pretty good sized needle in that, in that bursa. So this is a, a bad location injury. Um, most of these, if we're patient and, and do therapy, uh, lasering, shock wave, reevaluating, uh, most time we can get the um, majority of these horses back going. Okay. Um, and shoeing gets to be a part of it too. But you got your farrier coming tomorrow. Yes. So I am going to write him some directions down oh, okay, how good. to do that, okay? Because when we look at a foot like this, we want to support it, okay? Okay. Uh, there's different ways we look at injuries and how we want to shoe. And for this type of injury, support is, is what we're after. And okay. also to in, decrease some of the tension on that deep flexor tendon, okay? Okay. So. Yeah, because I could tell when he'd be in the, in the stall, mm -hmm. and I would go out there every day and like feel it. Right. If he's more pressure is on the right foot, because mm -hmm. you don't really feel the, but then when he puts full pressure there, that bulb on the Pops back. Pops out. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
And that's the tendon sheath. That's the inflammation, that tendon sheath coming up through there. So okay. that's normal. So when we look at a foot, there again, there, there's certain things that we can change. We shoeing and certain things we can't. But when we look at a foot like this, you know, are we going to try to uh, protect it or stabilize it, decrease tension, decrease pressure? Um, and in, in this situation, I want to stabilize the foot and I also want to decrease the tension on that deep flexor okay. so it's got a chance to heal, okay? Mm -hmm. And once we do that, then we can limit his turnout to an acre or less if we could. So, okay. But we're going to stall rest him here for the next 10 days, two weeks, okay? Okay. But we'll take that wrap off tomorrow and I'll get his anti-inflammatories. We got his sheath cleaned. And we know what the injury is, we just got to get it healed up. Right. So we'll get you a protocol as far as rehabbing. Okay. And then we'll go from there, okay? Yep, perfect.